got the biggest heart is going to walk away from here the winner of this fight. All right, Ferdy, and now we will soon find out which chest cavity, as you put it, packs the better goods. There is Leroy Murphy, 29 years old, born and raised in the Robert Taylor Housing Project on South State Street in Chicago. 25 wins, one loss, 22 knockouts. The number two contender in the IBF rankings, number six, WBC, number seven, WBA. And now, entering the ring to face Murphy, here comes 34-year-old Dwight Muhammad Kawi, once Dwight Braxton, out of Camden, New Jersey, number three WBA contender, and number one ranked by the IBF at the behest of Dwayne Ford, the Nevada State Athletic Commission chairman, who asked, as we mentioned before, that the IBF not drop him from that ranking after the 10-round decision lost to Ocasio on May 15. 27 wins, four losses, and one draw for Kawi. He has scored 16 knockouts. Earlier, Dave Dial spoke to Leroy Murphy about his motivation for this fight and what he will bring into the ring against Kawi. Well, if, if in, I, at night I'd sit down and I wonder about the way I'm going to fight him and the type of attitude I'm have going in ring, it sort of, it, it bothers me because I never fought a, a fighter who used to be a world champion and, you know, and plus the age difference, it's just the experience. And then I don't think he had more experience than I do because I've been around longer. So it just, he's just another punch to me. But, but he is a bit of a nightmare though. True, he is. And no mystery about what he's going to do. No way. It's like riding piggyback on a buzzsaw, and you know that you got to get him off you. That's right. So how do you do it? Well, there's several ways. Either I fight him like a Casio fought him, or I go to move and hit him run and stay away from his left hook and right hooks. And what do you? How do you punch him? Well, he's, op he's open. He give you the head. So if I get my two or three shots and get out of there, you know, I'll be safe for at least five or six rounds. You know, my the object of it to try to attack Hawaii out in the, in the earlier rounds. If I get him tied out the earlier round, I swear I can have more control of the fight going into the later rounds. I don't want to be an amateur psychologist with you, but all during this interview, I look at you and I hear you saying to me, this is my make or break fight. This is it, everything. It determines whether I go on and fight or whether I go back to Chicago and take care of my family and work as a sheriff. Is that what you're saying? Well, in a way it is because, you know, like I say, boxing takes a lot. It takes a lot of sacrifice and even in your job and your home life. And I feel that if I don't make it, if I don't make it this last chance, you know, I might as well give it a lost thought after the fight if I lose to think about see do I really want to continue this or do I want to put another year in this or not now the fighters meet in the middle of the ring to receive instructions from referee Rene Barre of France the onus birdie really on Leroy Murphy Kawi brings the same thing every time relentless pressure and a resolute determination to move forward tail of the tape Kawi at five feet six and three quarter inches very short for a fighter in this weight class. Murphy has the height and reach advantage. And as Ferdy Pacheco mentioned earlier, Kawi had difficulty making the 195 pound weight limit earlier today. WBA rules, there is a mandatory eight count and the three knockdown rule is in effect. No standing eight counts. The bell saves the fighter only at the end of the last round. Three judges scoring on the 10 point must system and the referee does not score. This is going to be very interesting at the very outset because Leroy Murphy has got to get strong and keep Cowie from uh, dominating him with his game plan, which is, as we both know, straight ahead, just like Joe Fraser. French crowd tends to be very quiet at the beginning of the first round. This is scheduled for 10 rounds. From the outset, Murphy staggered by a left hand that was not that hard a punch. He does not appear to have good balance as he sets up the fight inside, which should benefit Kawi. Definitely. Uh, Kawi's, uh, not Kawi's motion, his head, and the referee said keep fighting. 
I don't think that was a punch as much as it was a trip, but uh, the thing to look forward to is the strength of Leroy Murphy. Leroy Murphy's punches are very hard, but he doesn't seem to be throwing them with a great deal of authority right now, whereas Kawi loves to fight inside, is getting in there with those short little punches. And as you pointed out, Ferdy, the pre-fight talk by Murphy, as exposed in that interview with Dave Niles, sounded defeatist in tone. It sounded like a loser. It sounded like a guy who's ready to lose and go home and be a sheriff. This uh, is which a guy is unusual for this man who has had most of his career going his way, knockouts all over the place. 25 wins. One loss, the only loss, a 10-round knockout by Ricky Parkey in October of 1986. Parkey later lost that IBF cruiserweight crown. Just, Dawi just landed a very hard hammering right hand which staggered Leroy Murphy. And in the first round, this looks like the kind of fight that White Muhammad Kawi would like for it to be. Murphy standing in front of him, more or less a stationary target for Kawi, who is the least subtle cruiserweight fighters in his approach. Kawi is doing all the leading, he's doing all the fighting. It's his fight, it's the way he wants. He's already got Murphy in trouble. There's another right hand that drove back. Murphy to the ropes. This is just the way Ricky Parkey knocked him out. He just went to the ropes, covered up, and let the other man punch. If he does that with Kawi, we may have a short night tonight. Murphy trying, but unable to get off. Blinking his eyes now as the first round comes toward a close. Kawi landing all of the effective punches so far in the first round. Another right hand. Howie couldn't have this round more his way. He's, he's planned a fight and he's carrying it out. Every little strategy has worked. And what I see in Leroy Murphy is what I saw in the lobby. A great deal of lethargy and disinterest. He just doesn't seem to be in it this first round. And Kawi has dominated this first round. Leroy Murphy has been housed at the same hotel which we occupied. We'll go back now to his corner between rounds one and two where manager and trainer Jim Strickland will step in directly in front of Leroy Murphy and try to make an impact on the fighter who was lethargic to say the least in the first stand. Not only does uh, lethargic, but disinterested. He just, his mind doesn't seem to be here. It didn't seem to be for the last three or four days. I've been talking to him in the lobby for three or four days. He has not moved from the same chair for three or four days. And I just found it very unusual. He has no mental uh, stamina. He has no mental strength. He's not looking forward to this. He was just sort of saying, well, when the day comes, I'll fight it. We'll see. And certainly fought the first round that way. And certainly lost the first round that way. I gave it 10-9 to Kawi. A very comfortable Dwight Muhammad Kawi in his corner with longtime trainer Wesley Muzon. Now the between round period set to come to a close and they'll begin round two. We'll see if Murphy can muster a little more energy in the second round after a first round which was, as Ferdy has pointed out, all's white Muhammad Kawi. There's a history of bangers that, that uh, you go on a long spree of knockouts like Leroy Murphy has had, and then all of a sudden you lose one by a knockout. And then you're never the same fighter again and have the Sonny Liston have many of the big bangers who are used to having everything go their way. I don't know what's happened to Leroy Murphy as far as his stamina and as far as his intention is concerned. He has certainly has put himself in harm's way when he stands directly in front of Kawi and lets Kawi come in hooking as he just did then and missed. Uh, the whole first round was, couldn't be better for Kawi. Since being knocked out by Parkey, Murphy has had two fights in 1987 against lesser opponents, Steve Mormino and Bobby Crabtree. Both fights went the distance, Murphy winning by decision. Both fights which should have been knockouts. Um, the quality of Leroy Murphy before that, he was a champion, and can certainly bang, should have knocked out both those opponents, not taking anything away from them, but such was Leroy Murphy's punching power and qualities. He should have taken care of those two, indicating a lack of interest and a lack of uh, ambition and dedication. But here he is against Kawi, and he better start to get interested and dedicated. White Muhammad Kawi, 34 years old, won't have many chances left. Through most of his career, he was called the Camden Buzzsaw because of the relentless style. 
The question now is, does the buzz saw buzz anymore? Murphy is making it possible for him to release that kind of relentless pressure tonight. This is the kind of fight you're looking at right here that Dwight Quay loves. Just put your head in there and get the other guy exhausted. Working away, just as if you were chopping down a tree. His legs spread for traction and just going at it. Murphy, on the other hand, has got to whip himself away from there. He's got to spin out, get some punching room, and start landing hard, punishing punches. Because of Kawi's stature, or lack of it, because he's trained through much of his career in Philadelphia, and because of the style, the comparison is often made to Joe Frazier. It's not a bad one at all. Not a bad one and not a bad fighter. Again, the right hand hammering Murphy. Murphy just seems to blink and go back further toward the ropes, where, of course, there awaits that trap that Kawi likes to set. Murphy now trying to body Kawi off of him and follow with punches, and he's begun to land punches now using that technique. It'll allow Kawi to lean on the shoulder, try to push him off, and then deliver. Because of the uh, extreme shortness of Kawi, many punches go south of the border. Are unintentionally low punches, but nonetheless low. Pretty soon, the referee should start to wise up and begin to warn Leroy Murphy about those sweeping hooks which land way below that white belt line. Most of the first rounds dominated by Dwight Muhammad Kawi Murphy began to show a little life in the last minute of that round. Throughout the evening, as between round situations make it possible, we'll be bringing you brief vignettes to try to underline the color of this particular experience in San Tropez. Here now the first of those vignettes in the San Tropez Bay, littered with some of the largest, most beautiful, most sumptuous pleasure boats in the world and all of them suitably adorned with objects of beauty. You're Coming up you're later on, the WBA and IBF Cruiserweight Championship bout. Of course, the WBA technically calls the division junior heavyweight title holder Evander Holyfield against Ozzy Ocasio, himself a one-time cruiserweight champion. I was just commenting that I thought some of those books were certainly in your class, and you would have one of that type uh, in your backyard. Yes, in and I'll keep it in my backyard since I wouldn't know what to do with it if I put it in the water, Purdy. <laughs> the backyard would be the best place for any boat that I ever own. Round three begins. Ten round bout. The winner to get a shot against the title holder, the winner of tonight's Evander Holyfield Asio Casio bout. Motion for the first time from Leroy Murphy. In his corner, he's been told, listen, don't just stand there. Start walking around. Start moving. And he certainly has started to do an Ocasio-like um, trot to one side. But you question how effective Murphy can be backing up like this. It's, it's not, not his style. Not his style. He's quite correct. Once you start getting out of what got you here, you're in big trouble. If you start bouncing around like if you were Sugar Ray Leonard and you're not, then you have some difficulty. Could be that Jim Strickland just wants his fighter to buy a little time and get some movement to try to get life into his legs. He's shown none in the first two rounds. And not only that, but remember, uh, everybody attributes to Kawi a uh, fading uh, stamina that to get him older, to get him uh, tired. And, uh, you know, I can't remember how many fighters have gone down waiting for uh, Kawi to get tired. Indeed, that's what Murphy spoke about in the hotel several times, staying away from Kawi and trying to tire him out. What he isn't doing is staying away. Yeah, right he started now, to run, and he quit running. Yeah. And uh, that was his uh, unfortunate undoing so far. Kawi now hammering away as Murphy stands near the ropes. Not a good place to be against the Camden buzzsaw. Very low punch. That one very hard by Leroy. Every time he sweeps under with an uppercut, he lands under that pony designation at uh, mid-belt that Ka Kawi has. Not intentional again, I... It's just that he's so short, you can hardly help hitting him low. It has not been an easy life for the former Dwight Braxton, now Dwight Muhammad Kawi, who started professional boxing in 1978 after five and a half years of hard time in New Jersey's Rahway State Prison on an armed robbery rap. In 1981, he won the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship over Saad Muhammad. He's looking for another title shot against Evander Holyfield, who took away his cruiserweight crown last year. And he is getting pounded uh, by combinations uh, is Leroy Murphy, who's 
cannot seem to understand that he's got to get out of that corner. Four or five excellent shots went in from Dwight Cowie, and uh, no motion from Leroy Murphy. He's just content to sit there and take them, and that's exactly how he got knocked out with Ricky Parkey. He better get his mind into Saint Tropez here because uh, he has not fought a thinking fight at all. Murphy taking long, deep breaths at those moments when the fighters clinch. Look at the difference right there as that set of punches. While Leroy Murphy punched more, they were ineffective, they were slow, they were low, while Dwight had punched three times, but very sharply. And that's the kind of thing that drives judges to distraction. Cowie has held two titles in his career. First, a light heavyweight crown. Later, the cruiserweight crown, which he lost in July of last year to Evander Holyfield, a 15-round split decision in Atlanta. Earlier, he talked to us about his desire to get back at Holyfield. Now, I want to get back to Holyfield, and again, I don't see why I have to keep going through a whole lot of fighters to get to Holyfield, you know, but um, that's it, you know. Um, I'm sure Holyfield don't want to see me again. I'm sure his people don't want to see me again. And that makes me even more, you know, uh, pr proud, you know, in myself that to know that they respect me such, you know, and I know that I'm a worthy opponent, and I know I, I believe in them more so than I am the champion, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm more than welcome to prove it. You live for that. Do I? I do. Right now, I do live That's for that. That's all that matters to you. Right? And the more they hold it off, the more they build my intensity. It's like them loading the gun against themselves. And Ferdy Pacheco will look back at one of those Cowie flurries which have dominated the first three rounds. This is the one in the corner where Leroy Murphy simply could not get away. Now we are back live as round four begins in San Tropez. Dwight Muhammad Cowie in the red trunks versus Leroy Murphy in the black. Fighting at 195 pounds. The winner to get a shot at the 190 pound title holder. The winner of tonight's later bout between Evander Holyfield, the champion, and Ozzy Ocasio, the challenger. We must also mention that it is a very hot and humid night. We have been here for five days, and the heat is oppressive and weakens you. Whereas Dwight Howie has been out and active and moving around, Leroy Murphy has not. He's been just hanging around the lobby of a hotel. He's not walked around. He's not gotten himself used to this. So if anybody gets tired right now, it should be Leroy Murphy. Of course, the punches of Dwight Cohen are just having something to do with get, his getting tired. Yeah, good good point, Ferdy, because in, in our experience, the typical day in San Tropez is about a million degrees with a thousand percent humidity. And it's a little cooler than we might have expected tonight, but still quite warm. To this point, quite unofficially, I have Kawi ahead, 30 to 27, meaning he's taken every round with Christopher Puncher. And this action no different from what we've seen most of the night. Leroy Murphy leaning back on the ropes there, as you saw, and taking punches from Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Relatively quiet French crowd. Those leaping hooks of uh, Dwight Kawhi keep catching him because he's so slow. Leroy Murphy sees him coming. He can't get out. It's like he's stepping around in molasses. I've never seen him this slow and lethargic. I mean, it's the only word I can think of to describe him. He's lazy. Hard to believe at this moment, isn't it, Ferdy, that Leroy Murphy is five years younger than Kawhi, brings in a record of 25 wins and one loss. Further illustration of how rapidly boxing skills can deteriorate when they do. Or in that your mind has. The mind is so important in boxing. I mean, you just have to have that burning desire. A man like Ali, you'd have to shoot with a gun to beat. This guy is obviously abdicated. He has not got the desire that Kawi has to uh, step forward into the championship division. Plus, looking at him here, and look at that little roll of fat around him. He should have been out walking. He should have been sweating. He should have been running. He should have been doing all of the things he did. Instead, he took a stationary position and didn't move, and I think that the um, roll of fat and that layer of fat that you see there is what contributes a great deal to his list. Round four comes to a close, and a very groggy Leroy Murphy trundles back to his corner where Jim Strickland will step in once again and try to work a little magic. 
The action in the bout still the same. Cowie pounding away at Leroy Murphy. These are the hooks that, that you see that Dwight throws. Whether he throws them to the body or over the top, they seem to line up. Murphy is doing a very good job there of avoiding when he comes right up the middle and connects. There's a, a that didn't connect, but that's a typical example of the kind of hooks and straight right hands which is driving Leroy Murphy into the ropes and winning round after round after round for Dwight Cowie. Empty seats on the carousel, Verdi, and perhaps at this moment Leroy Mur Murphy should board one of those horses and get right on out of here, or at the very least get on his bicycle and try to put a little distance between himself and the so obviously dominant Dwight Muhammad Cowie. I tell you what would have been depressing to see. Ocasio on the merry-go-round <laughs> training for the next We may fight. see exactly that later tonight based on Ocasio's performance against Kawi in Las Vegas on May 15. Murphy again trying the little walk around and uh, punch from outside, which is what he should be doing. He should be punching from outside, establishing a jab. His eyes look a little swollen. He had a lot of conjunctivitis yesterday, which cleared up. There's an irritation of the eye. But they look like they're getting swollen now. From the continuous pounding, he's blinking as if they're bothering him. Particularly the right eye, which seems to be swelling above the eyelid. Due, of course, to that good left hook. Fascinating to note, Kawi never seems to look at his opponent's head. He keeps his eyes fixed on the midriff at when all you're time. that short, you find out <laughs> early in life that you don't look up to people when you're boxing. You look down of and course. you get hit real good. The old joke about him prior to his title fight with Matthew Saad Mohammed in 1981 was based on the Broadway play, Your Arms Too Short to Box with God, which in boxing parlance became Arms Too Short to Box with Saad. But he <laughs> proved on December 1981 that that wasn't indeed the case as he scored the 10-round TKO of Saad Muhammad to win the WBC light heavyweight title. Later lost it to Michael Spinks in the unification fight in March of 1983. It's interesting in, in both very close fights that he had that, uh, with Spinks and again with Evander Holyfield that at the end you really didn't know who won. So it's another one of those, who won that? And you look at each other and one guy says, I think one guy did, one guy says, I think the other guy did. It wasn't a clear-cut victory at all. So he has been in championship contention all along. He's a very dedicated man, and he wants that championship again once more before he has to retire. Dominated the first five or six rounds of the Holyfield fight last summer before Evander unexpectedly was able to muster the stamina and the will to come back and win the fight from behind. The will, you just said the word, the will. That young brain that tells you I can do it, this guy's not got me yet. And of course, Evander Holyfield's got a whole bunch of that, and so has Dwight Cowie. Right now, the problem is for Leroy Murphy to get a little bit of it so that he can begin to make a battle of this rather than just get a pummeling, which he has been doing relentlessly through four rounds. We're in round five of a scheduled 10 in San Tropez. Leroy Murphy so far taking a beating from Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Kawi intent on getting another shot at a cruiserweight title and perhaps a rematch with the man who took that crown away from him last summer, Vander Holyfield. Murphy goes down to one knee after a series of Kawi punches. That, that's more a uh, give up than a, than a knockdown. That's more a listen. I'm not going to take too much of this. That was a perfectly timed right counter to Leroy Murphy's right. Leroy threw a hard right. Howie threw a perfectly timed punch. And then two or three punches later, it was more of a delayed effect. Well, the opportunity is certainly there now for Kawi if he can put a few punches together. Round five comes to a close. Murphy reaches out and pats Kawi on the stomach by way of congratulation, I assume, for so dominating the first five rounds. And, of course, that makes it a 10-8 round, which even further lengthens the lead of Kawi, who looks at this moment as if he has uh, got a lock on, at the very least, winning the fight, if not stopping Leroy, who shows every sign of trying to resign. All right, let's take a look back at the punches which led to the knockdown or, if you prefer, the kneel down of Leroy Murphy. As this will be fine right here. neither a delayed effect nor anything that's really just a sort of, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Give me a break here. Let me take There's got to be a place here I can rest. Maybe this is it. You are watching Showtime Championship Boxing, and we are midway through the first of two bouts you'll see this evening in the cruiserweight class. 
Dwight Muhammad Kawi in the red trunks, formerly known as Dwight Braxton, the Camden buzzsaw, chasing Leroy Murphy of Chicago, Illinois. Both of them former title holders in this weight class. And as so often happens, Jim, the interview before the fight becomes meaningful. Here's an interview that with Dave Dowles that uh, Leroy Murphy sounded listless and uninspired and almost considering alternatives to boxing, saying, well, I can go back and be a sheriff. I can do this. I can do that. He didn't hear any of that, uh, listen, I'm going to take this guy's head off and I'm going to go fight for the title. And it's exactly what's happened in the ring. That is exactly. He is just here. His body is here. There's no intention. And all he's done is take a good beat. A tremendous punch. From and again, Murphy again. puts one knee on the canvas. French referee Rene Barre issuing the count. Mandatory eight count in effect. Cowie comes back in, a right hand, another right hand. Competitively, it appears to be over at this point. Murphy offering very little in return. Again, Murphy goes down. Barre will count one more time. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Plenty of time still to go in round six. Now we brandishing a fist at Murphy as the count continues. Barre decides that's enough. A humane judge and a wonderful judgment because he really had no business to go out there and get knocked down for the third time. He went down twice. They were not fulminating knockouts or knockdowns. They were sort of collapses of uh, energy and willpower. But the referee correctly judged that there's no point in just doing that over and over again. He gave it to him, no question about way ahead of the fight and no reason to continue. I fully agree. On Leroy Murphy, Kawi brings the same thing every time, relentless pressure and a resolute determination to move forward. Tail of the tape, Kawi at five feet, six and three quarter inches. Very short for a fighter in this weight class. Murphy has the height and reach advantage. And as Ferdy Pacheco mentioned earlier, Kawi had difficulty making the 195 pound weight limit earlier today. WBA rules, there is a mandatory eight count and the three knockdown rule is in effect. No standing eight counts. The bell saves the fighter only at the end of the last round. Three judges scoring on the 10 point must system and the referee does not score. This is going to be very interesting at the very outset because Leroy Murphy has got to get strong and keep Cowie from uh, dominating him with his game plan, which is, as we both know, straight ahead, just like Joe Fraser. Fred, the biggest heart, is going to walk away from here, the winner of this fight. All right, Ferdy, and now we will soon find out which chest cavity, as you put it, packs the better good. There is Leroy Murphy, 29 years old, born and raised in the Robert Taylor Housing Project on South State Street in Chicago. 25 wins, one loss, 22 knockouts. The number two contender in the IBF rankings, number six, WBC, number seven, WBA. And now, entering the ring to face Murphy, here comes 34-year-old Dwight Muhammad Kawi, once Dwight Braxton, out of Camden, New Jersey, number three WBA contender, and number one ranked by the IBF at the behest of Dwayne Ford, the Nevada State Athletic Commission chairman, who asked, as we mentioned before, that the IBF not drop him. I don't want to be an amateur psychologist with you, but all during this interview, I look at you and I hear you saying to me, this is my make or break fight. This is it, everything. It determines whether I go on and fight or whether I go back to Chicago and take care of my family and work as a sheriff. Is that what you're saying? Well, in a way it is because, you know, like I say, boxing takes a lot. It takes a lot of sacrifice and even your job and your home life. And I feel that if I don't make it, if I don't make it this last chance, you know, I might as well give it a lot of thought after the fight. If I lose, think about, see, do I really want to continue this or do I want to put another year in this or not? Now the fighters meet in the middle of the ring to receive instructions from referee Rene Barre of France. The onus, Bertie, really that ranking after the 10-round decision lost to Ocasio on May 15. 27 wins, four losses, and one draw for Kawi. He has scored 16 knockouts. Earlier, Dave Giles 
spoke to Leroy Murphy about his motivation for this fight and what he will bring into the ring against Kawi. Well, if, if I, at night I'd sit down and I wonder about the way I'm going to fight him and the type of attitude I'm going to have going in the ring. It's sort of, it's, it bothers me because I never fought a, a fighter who used to be a world champion and, you know, and plus the age difference. It's just the experience. And then I don't think he had more experience than I do because I've been around longer. So it just... He's just another punch to me. But but he is a bit of a nightmare, though. True, he is. And no mystery about what he's going to do. No way. <laughs> it's like riding piggyback on a buzzsaw, and you know that you got to get him off you. That's right. So how do you do it? Well, there's several ways. Either I fight him like a Casio fought him, or I go to move and hit him run and stay away from his left hook and right hooks. And what do you, how do you punch him? Well, he's, op he's open. He'll give you the head. So if I get my two or three shots and get out of there, you know, I'll be safe for at least five or six rounds. You know, my, the object of it to try to attack while he's out in the, in the earlier rounds. If I get him tied out the earlier round, I swear I can have more control of the fight going into the later rounds. 